How not to assemble a hundred piece jigsaw puzzle. Take all the single pieces in your hands, throw them all into the table, and see if they'll form a finished puzzle. So why wouldn't this work? The chances that all hundred pieces would be lined up in just the correct way and fall into the right places is pretty well zero. So what does this have to do with chemistry? Well, how do we actually assemble jigsaw puzzles? We usually start with one piece and add other pieces to it one by one in a series of steps. This is similar to how all but very simple chemical reactions take place. Look at this chemical reaction. If this reaction took place in one single step, how many different particles would have to collide? The reactants include five of these, two of these, and 16 of these which gives a total of 23 particles. If this reaction took place in one step, these 23 particles would have to collide in this single step. We can imagine 23 particles randomly moving in a container. The chances of 23 different particles colliding simultaneously and all having the correct energy and collision geometry is again about zero. So this reaction definitely does not take place in a single step. Even three particle collisions, like the collision of two hydrogen molecules with one oxygen molecule, are about a thousand times less likely than two particle collisions, like a silver ion colliding with a chloride ion to form silver chloride. Most reactions that are not just two particle collisions take place in a series of simple steps, where each step depends on the others before it. The series or sequence of steps by which a reaction takes place is called a reaction mechanism. Here are a few points about reaction mechanisms. First, they cannot be determined simply by looking at the overall reaction. They are often deduced through much study and research sometimes up to years. And don't worry, you will not be asked to come up with a mechanism from scratch, just given a reaction. Some mechanisms are known, many are yet to be discovered. Maybe you'll play a role in discovering a mechanism someday. Now we'll have a look at a reaction mechanism that is known. Looking at this overall reaction and focusing on the reactants, we can see that there are four and one or five reactant particles. There's almost a zero percent chance that these will collide simultaneously in the correct way to result in a one-step reaction. This reaction is known to take place in three relatively simple steps. In step one, an HBr and an O2 molecule collide and form an unstable activated complex which we call HOOBR. In some textbooks, activated complexes are called transition states. The two terms are synonymous. The bonds in an activated complex are often shown as dashed lines, and the formula is surrounded by square brackets. This bond now breaks, and these new bonds form. And now we have a new molecule called HOOBr. The bonding in the HOOBr molecule is significantly different than that in the unstable activated complex, even though the formulas for the two species are the same. The HOOBr molecule is much more stable than the HOOBr activated complex. We can summarize step one as HBr plus O2 gives HOOBr. In step two, an HBr and an HOOBr molecule collide and form another activated complex which has two H's, two O's, and two Br's. So we call it H2O2Br2. These two bonds break and these two new bonds form. And now we have two molecules of HOBr. We summarize step two as HBr plus HOOBr gives two HOBr. In step three, an HBr and an HOBr molecule collide 
and form an activated complex which has two H's, one O, and two BR's. So we'll call it H2OBR2. These two bonds now break, and these two new bonds form. And we're left with a molecule of H2O and a molecule of BR2. Both of these molecules are very stable. We write these as products in the equation for this step. We now summarize step 3 as HBr plus HOBr gives H2O plus Br2. We can now write a summary of all three steps. Step 1 is slow. How do we know that? Well, the relative rates of each of the steps has been determined experimentally. Step 2 is found to be fast, and step 3 is found to be very fast. We double step 3 to use up both HOBr molecules produced in step 2. Each step in a reaction mechanism is called an elementary process. Let's focus on step 1 for a moment. Of course we see that it's slow. It means that the HOOBr is being formed slowly. Looking at step 2, we see that step 2 needs the HOOBr made in step 1. So even though step 2 is fast, it depends on the slow supply of HOOBr from the slow step 1. It can only produce HOBr as fast as it receives HOOBr from step 1. So it doesn't produce HOBr very quickly. And even though step 3 is very fast, it can't proceed any faster than its slow supply of HOBr from step 2 will allow. So if we wanted to speed up the rate of the overall reaction, which step would we have to speed up? Step 1, Step 2, or Step 3? I think you can see that we would have to speed up the slowest step in order to speed up the overall reaction. In this mechanism, Step 1 is the slowest step. The slowest step in any reaction mechanism limits or determines the rate of the overall reaction. Therefore, the slowest step in a reaction mechanism is called the rate determining step. I think you can see that if we had a way of speeding up only step 2, which is already fast, or only step 3, which is already very fast, that speeding up neither of these could speed up the overall reaction. Everything depends on the product from the slowest step, so the only way to speed up the overall reaction is to speed up the rate determining step, or the slowest step in the mechanism. Just a little point here. In this mechanism, the slowest step is step 1, but that's not true in every mechanism. In some mechanisms, the rate determining step is step 2, or step 3, etc. But what is always true is you must speed up the rate determining step in order to speed up the overall reaction. If we're given the steps in a reaction mechanism, we can use them to write the equation for the overall reaction. We we'll use this mechanism as an example. Before we add up all the reactions, we circle the species that we can cancel out, that is, identical species that appear on both sides of the arrows. We see that HOOBr is on the right of step 1 and on the left of step 2, so we circle it. We can also circle the two molecules of HOBr that appear on both sides. And now we draw a line under the last step. We write the words overall reaction here. We add up all the species remaining on the left side of the arrows and write them here. There is one, two, and two more, which is a total of four HBr molecules. So we write four HBr molecules here in the overall reaction. And there is one molecule of O2 remaining on the left side. So we add it here in the overall reaction. Now we add up all the species remaining on the right side of the arrows and write them here. We have two molecules of H2O, so we write 2H2O here. And we have two molecules of Br2, so we write Br2 here. Every time we write a new equation, we always check to see that it's balanced. We have four H's on the left side and four H's on the right side. We have two O's on the left side and two O's on the right side. 
four VRs on the left side, and two times two equals four VRs on the right side. So the equation is balanced. Now, here's one for you to try. Pause the video and write the equation for the overall reaction. Then resume to check your answer. Circle the AX2 on both sides. Circle the AX on both sides. Circle the X on both sides. Now we have two A's and two X's on the left side of the arrows. So we write those in our reactants. And we have A2 and X2 on the right side of the arrows. So we write these in as the products. We check now to make sure the equation for the overall reaction is balanced. We have two A's on both sides and two X's on both sides. So the overall reaction is written and balanced. For help on reaction mechanisms or any other chemistry topic, visit CalderChemistry.com or email me at dcalder at gmail.com. Thank you for watching this video.